I want to talk about a really cool fast-paced 2D platformer. So I just tried out the short but sweet demo for Berserk Boy, a game by the creatively named Berserk Boy Games and published by Big Sugar. I've really enjoyed playing it over and over again, so I knew I had to make a quick video rambling about it. First impressions are everything, and holy shit does it start off on a good note and keeps on going. The title screen is ooh, beautiful, like this pixel art is just amazing with a smooth animation on the hair and plants, and seeing the characters just chilling in nature with a sit in the background is super cool. Am I gushing about a title screen? Yes! After selecting whether you'd like to play with infinite lives or not, which is a choice I really appreciate in a game like this, you're thrown right into the cutscene. You play as Kay, protector of the city, I think, who has incredible abilities through the use of a mysterious orb. Unfortunately, he loses control of his emotions, and since the orb reacts to it, his powers too. His stoic bird companion, Fior, reminds him that nothing will stop the monsters if he doesn't calm down, which isn't reassuring at all, but despite that, Kay listens to the bird's advice and takes deep breaths. The enemies go towards him and time freezes so the game can elegantly show off its unique gimmick. Kay has the ability to swap forms. You only start off with one, though you do unlock another later on. You select his form, and BAM, you transform into Berserk Boy in lightning mode, as Kay shouts out his catchphrase, um, go Berserk, and then the music kicks in, and yeah, this is really cheesy, but I won't deny that it's cool as hell. He blasts the enemies away with lightning, and after a brief tutorial on the UI, the game properly begins. Berserk Boy's greatest strength is evident as soon as you start playing. Kay feels fucking amazing to control. His normal run speed and jump height feel bang on, but the thing that really sold me on the movement is the dash. This is the sole reason why Kay's lightning form is my favorite, because this 8 directional move is so fun to use. You can normally dash once in midair before touching the ground, unless you hit an enemy. Then you can do it again, and as long as you hit something, you can do infinite dashes, and while this is powerful, it doesn't feel broken as it takes skill to chain them together and it can just as easily launch you towards danger if used recklessly. For example, in this section, I would have fallen into the spikes if I dashed into the pit, but since I positioned correctly and timed it well, I was able to destroy the flying enemy, giving me another dash so I could cross the spiked pit safely. It's a super versatile move, as hitting an enemy that can take more than one hit will tag them, and by using your normally close-range lightning blast, a projectile will zoom towards the dude you smacked and blow up the strongest of enemies. You can also dash towards the ground and jump to do a really high leap into the air and dash again. This move wasn't necessary to beat the level, but man was it handy for skipping parts of it. Hell, almost every move that Kay has is versatile, as they have uses for platforming and combat. The slam is good for breaking obstacles and getting to the ground quickly, but can also be used to deal tons of damage if positioned correctly. Even Kay's unlockable fire form seems to be more combat focused at first, but, you know, it replaces his move with mid-air kicks, which also slow your fall, uppercuts, which can be used for vertical movement when there's no walls to jump off of, and yes, you can swap forms whenever to save yourself with it, and you can turn yourself into a Beyblade on the ground, and that's only the second best part. The most interesting part is you can drill into the ground to reach parts of the level you otherwise couldn't access. Yeah, like that! While Berserk Boy's level design is catered towards satisfying fast-paced movement, with many things pushing players towards being that way, it also rewards keen-eyed players with various collectibles to find tucked away in sneaky spots. There's these tokens which currently don't do anything, but I'm assuming they'll be useful in the full game, and many resistant members to find and rescue throughout the level. With each person you find, the bar fills up, and getting it to 60% lets you get into a cool secret area with tons of robots to blast and items to collect. Whilst getting it to 100% doesn't actually do anything in the demo, it says a lot that I didn't really care about that because I seriously enjoyed just doing it more than whatever reward it could give. I don't know what the items do because the demo is only one stage, a very polished and well-designed level that shows off the potential of Kay's moveset, but also one that's pretty short with a decent boss fight at the end. 
Despite that, I poured 3 hours into a demo that should take 7 minutes to beat and around 30 to 100%, and this is because I loved the movement and feel of the game so much that I started to set challenges for myself just so I could play more of the game. My favourite self-imposed challenge was to see how high I could get my combo counter, and to figure out if it was possible to keep it up for the whole level. This increases when you hit enemies and you can reset the timer by quickly hitting something else, or by collecting a blue orb. While combos don't really do anything, they're fantastic at motivating the player to play well, and as fast as possible, because it's a wonder what seeing a number going up can do to monkey brain players like me. And I'm going to assume that it works as a good motivator for the level designer too, I know this sounds a bit strange, but combos finish in 4 seconds if you don't do anything so they now have a good reason and reminder during testing to make sure the player has something exciting to do in less than 4 seconds for almost the whole level, meaning that they have to be jam-packed with enemies and collectibles to allow players to get a high combo count, which makes the levels feel way more alive, which just makes the game way more fun! The highest combo I got was 52, as it's extremely difficult to keep a combo past that point, and personally I'd really like it if it was possible to keep your combo until the end, because I loved trying to do it and it might make for a fun optional challenge. It does have a ranking system that could achieve the same motivating effects, but it's far too easy to get an S rank for it to feel rewarding. This is actually fine, because the level could change during development, so there's no point in putting too much thought into it for now, but it's something worth considering once it gets closer to being finished. Berserk Boy's audio and visuals also help to motivate the player due to how it manages to combine satisfying sound effects with beautiful sprite animations to make your actions feel real good. Like, the game looks great when standing still, with its clean UI, nice backgrounds, and New Hope City is made interesting with the many, like, futuristic decorations and architecture seen throughout the level. Where I think the game looks top-notch is through the flashy as hell animations, and since you're always moving, it always looks amazing. Like, they could have made the dash look just good with Kay doing that pose with his fist forward, but no, when you hit the button there's an explosion of colour, a cool purple trail, and when you hit an enemy there's sparks of energy flying off, explosions, robot bits flying into the distance, whole Holy shit! The crazy effects and animations apply to all of his moves, and it's really important for making the game feel as good as it does to play. The audio helps with that too. I will never get tired of hearing the sound effects for the attacks, or the noise of collecting tons of blue orbs. The voice actor for K did a pretty good job too. While most of it is grunts and cheesy lines, it fits surprisingly well, sounds nice to the ears, and helps to add some more oomph to the attacks. And on top of all of that, you got some high energy bangers by T. Lopes playing in the background. I audibly went, oh shit, when I found out he was helping out with the game. I loved his work on Sonic Mania's soundtrack, so I'm genuinely excited to hear more tunes once the game fully releases. Also, getting to hear little snippets of new songs in the previews posted on Twitter is such a tease. <laughs> While the demo blew me away, that's not to say that I didn't notice anything that may need some tweaking, especially how switching forms works. Currently, you hit Y, the game pauses, and then you use the D-pad to select a form from the wheel, then hit A. After a cool little animation, the game unpauses and you can move again. This is fine, but I feel like things could be streamlined a bit. While it wasn't too bad since there are only two forms in the demo, K will have five in the full game, and swapping from one side of this menu to the other, then watching the animation will get repetitive, so I think it may be worth considering. Since the menu is a circle around K, maybe letting the player use the sticks to pick a form would be nicer for some? Uh, you could use Y, then flick to instantly pick something though that would probably be a bit finicky, so I'm not sure. Or maybe make use of the bumpers to swap forms. They don't really do anything else in the demo, so maybe that could be a shortcut instead of opening the menu. The only problem I can think of with using the bumpers is the pause and animation that plays when you swap. I do really like how cool it looks, but I think the time it takes to swap pushes players away from doing it and taking full advantage of Kay's moveset. For example, there are enemies that can take multiple hits from the lightning form that can be one-shot by the fire mode's uppercut. Now, lightning is the king of mobility so far, due to the dash and big jump, so it's probably the one that you'll be using the most. I would want to swap to the uppercut, but the issue is it takes 3-4 to four seconds to do that. If I swap, 
uppercut, then swap back, that's going to take 5 to 7 seconds of just swapping. Instead of doing that, I can just spam the dash or use the lightning burst to solve the problem in two, which is the less interesting solution, but also the quickest. I simply don't have a reason to ever swap to the fire mode, but it's possibly because the demo's only stage is very clearly designed with the lightning abilities in mind. And that's actually really good, but I can't comment on whether this is a problem for the other stages. The time it takes to swap will become longer and possibly more frequent as the game goes on as more forms become accessible to the player, and they'll be less likely or willing to swap unless it's absolutely necessary. Maybe having form swaps, at least on the bumpers, be instant could help to solve this issue. It does instantly swap to the fire mode when touching areas it can dig through, which feels great. I'm only a player and not the developer of course, so you'll know how to deal with this better than me, so playtest some solutions if you agree, and see if something works. After recording all of these lines and writing that whole section out, I go on Twitter, I look at a post, there it is! You can use the bumpers to instantly swap! And that's cool, I guess I just, I guess I'll keep this in, fucking, I guess. Berserk Boy's demo has proved that it's absolutely worth keeping an eye on and checking it out once it fully releases. While its inspirations are obvious, it combines them in an interesting way and forges its own unique identity. Fast-paced and exhilarating gameplay, dazzling pixel animations, and blood-pumping music are only some of the reasons why I'm excited to see the future of this game. There was some stuff I couldn't really talk about properly, since it was only one stage, so I think I might make a video on it again once it fully releases. I still haven't figured out how I'll make videos on the full releases of demos I've previously covered, but I'll just figure that out later. Keep it up guys, you're on the right track.